Another thing that I've found is really a time-saving trick as we're moving into this sort of like blended environment or personalized learning, flexible learning type thing, is making videos because then I don't have to repeat myself over and over and over and the students can um, listen to what I have to say at their own pace and they can listen to it multiple times and they can also listen to it with subtitles, which I find a lot of the ESL students like. So when I was creating these different projects, I would generally speaking make an instructions page where I'm putting everything that I want them to do, due dates, things like that on the page. I would make one of the learning option boards. This was the most time consuming thing to create. This is the most time consuming thing to create because you're collating like basically every single resource that you have on your different objectives or on your different topics and putting it into one um, board. That took me the longest amount of time. And then you're making the learning log for the students. This didn't take that long because this is what they're going to be spending time um, putting information into. But one thing that you want to keep in mind is that um, when you're assigning this on Google Classroom, the student learning log, you're going to say make a copy for each student. And when you say make a copy for each student, you can't change it after that. So you have to be careful, like there are no changes that can be made, but you can make changes on your instruction page and you can make changes on your um, learning resources page throughout the unit or throughout the class. So if you start to see that like you made a mistake on the instruction page or on the learning option page, you can still um, go ahead and change that up throughout the class. But once you say assign the learning log to each student, you're committed to that and you can't change it without like a whole lot of trouble or like deleting it for all of the students. So you really want to pay attention to that. So sometimes what I'll use the videos for is um, I'll insert them into the instructions page because I might find that I'm starting to answer the same question over and over and over for every student like they might not know how to make a graph in sheets or they don't know how to use a ruler um, when they're making a geologic time scale um, whatever it is I'll make like a quick video and then insert that into the instructions or into the learning options page and then I'll instead of answering the question I just um, will direct the students to go ahead and take a look at that so videos have really been a time saver to me as I moved um, through this process